And, you know, a question came up in the discussion. There was this, you know, young sister who asked the question, I love everything about Islam except hijab. And it seems like hijab is there to protect men from looking at us. So, you know, I don't really see the point in it. And instead of arguing of the social benefits of hijab or what hijab does to honor women and all of that stuff, that's actually already going in the wrong direction, that conversation. We need to take a step back and ask a more fundamental question. Let's take a step back and let's, let's ask Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ibrahim alayhi salam loves Islam too. But then Allah makes a little tiny little request. How about you go in the middle of the desert and leave your family there? Right? He's not one that's gonna say, I love everything about Islam, but this whole leaving my family in the middle to die thing, I don't know. I'm not that comfortable with that. And after he's done with that, you know what, why don't you jump into a fire? You know, I love everything about Islam, except this whole, you know, burning myself alive, that's asking a little too much. No, nope. you don't find that question. Then Allah says, put a knife to your son's throat. Go ahead. And he says, you know, I love Islam, but I also love my son. I don't know, is there, can you give me a logical explanation for why I should do this? Can you tell me the social benefits or some of the other reasons, other benefits that why I should be obeying you? إِذْ قَالَ لَهُ رَبُّهُ أَسْلِمْ قَالَ أَسْلَمْتُ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ There's a reason Allah taught us that lesson in Surah Al-Baqarah. Whenever Allah said to him, give yourself up, submit, surrender, he said, I surrender, I give myself up, I submit myself entirely before the master of all peoples. بِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ so before we talk about any aspect of deen and try to figure out the logic of it, understand the larger purpose. Allah has made this deen one of submitting to Him. If you're having a hard time submitting to Him, you're having a hard time with Islam itself. The very central idea of deen itself. It's not to say you shouldn't understand the ahkam of Allah, but you, have to, you and I have to be ones that once we understand them, we have to, whether we get it or not, whether we see the logic of it or not, we have to give it up. We have to just give it up, you know. Allah Azza wa Jal even acknowledged in, in Surah Al-Baqarah when it came to riba. He said, well, you know, ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ قَالُوا إِنَّمَا الْبَيْعُ مِثْلُ الْرِبَى It's a very interesting discussion. Allah Azza wa Jal says there are people who consume riba. And they say that, you know, that's because they say that business is just like riba. I mean, if you look at liquid transactions, as solid transactions and money and cash and what it's backed by, and it's a complicated discussion. It could go either way. You can't even tell the difference. 1920, potato, potato, one, two lines in a contract. I mean, what's the big deal? It is the same. And if you sit and have a four-hour argument with a finance major about whether riba is halal or not, you know, or what's the difference between riba and business, you might say, yeah, it's the same, yeah. I don't see the practical difference. But Allah then made only one line. Instead of explaining to you the, the fine line differences between them, He said, there's only one more thing you need to know. Now that you understand to you in your head, they're very similar, there's only one more thing. وَأَحَلَّ اللَّهُ الْبَيْعَةَ وَحَرَّمَ الْرِبَا End of story. Allah made, uh, you know, Allah made business halal and He made riba haram. That is it. That's the conclusion.